Hi, welcome to Children's Art Week at the London Transport Museum. My name is Kate and for today's session, Depot Delve, we have come to the museum's depot at Acton Town to explore our extensive collection of poster art. Today we're going to explore the depot and the poster collection. We're going to talk to one of our curators and then I'm going to set you a design challenge. So let's get started. At the London Transport Museum, we tell the stories of how people have traveled around in the past, how they travel around in the present, and how they might travel around in the future. Some of you might have been to visit us at Covent Garden and seen some of the objects we have on display to help us tell these stories. We have over 500,000 objects in our collection. That includes big things like buses, trams and trains, as well as smaller things like maps, uniforms, photographs, and of course, posters. Now, if you have been to see us at Covent Garden, you might be thinking, I know I've seen a lot of objects, but I'm not sure I saw over 500,000. You'd be right. We only have a small amount of our collection on display at any one time. And when things aren't on display, they're here at the depot in Acton Town. Now, you can come and visit the depot on one of our special open weekends, but most of the time it's not open to the public, which is why I'm really excited to be able to show you around in today's Depot Delve. This is the poster store. The poster collection is one of the biggest and most beautiful parts of the museum's entire collection. There are over 15,000 different posters in here, showing about 5,000 different designs. All of these were commissioned by London's transport networks. Now, if an artwork is commissioned, that means that someone, either an individual, a business, or maybe a council, have paid to have that artwork created. Transport for London has done this a lot. But why? At the beginning of the 1900s, the transport network, in particular the tube, was still very new, and that meant that lots of people weren't using it yet. The transport networks hope to find a way to encourage people to explore the city and surrounding countryside by making them as appealing as possible. They hoped that by focusing on the destination, people would be encouraged to use the trains, buses and trams to get out and explore. Our city is full of wonderful places and over the years, hundreds of different artists have had the opportunity to show us what it has to offer. Not only was this a successful way to convince people to travel by transport, it also brought art to people's lives every day. The Art on the Underground program, as it is known today, is great for Transport for London, great for artists, and great for people like us who use the network. Now we're going to go talk to one of our curators, Georgia Morley, to find out a little bit more about the collection and what it's like to be a curator. A curator is somebody who is responsible for the museum's collection. It's up to them to find new objects to add to the collection, to take care of the things that we already have, and to decide what is going to go on display in the gallery. They decide what stories we tell and how we tell them. Let's go find Georgia. Hi Georgia. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us today. The first thing that I wanted to ask you is if you could tell us a little bit about your job and what it is that you love about it. Yes, so I am a curator at London Transport Museum, which is a really exciting job. I get to do loads of different things. Mostly I get to do research um, and I look after all of the objects at the depot and at the museum and I get to work on exhibitions as well. And could you tell us a little bit about uh, London Transport Museum's poster collection? Yeah, so our poster collection, we have 15,000 posters, which is a huge amount of posters, and um, they vary from about 1920s onwards, so right up until today. And we have posters about travelling to the city, but also travelling to the countryside. Some really amazing, colourful, bright, vibrant posters. And could you tell us, why do you think the posters are art? So I think the posters are art because they kind of start off as art. So we have poster artworks and then we have the final poster. So um, sometimes when artists are, are commissioned, so they're asked to produce a poster, 
They sometimes create an artwork to start off with, and that can be a painting or a collage. Sometimes that's done in charcoal or paint. And then after the artwork's produced, a poster is then produced from that artwork. Could you tell us how you choose which posters are going to go on display in the gallery? So that depends what the exhibition or display is about, usually. So sometimes we have a particular theme for a poster display. The last poster display I worked on was about sport. So we had posters about swimming and rugby and football. And the next poster display is about poster techniques. So for that, we are looking at paintings and collage and mosaic. And once we've picked the theme, we then decide from all of our 15,000 posters which ones to put on display. What do you think the posters tell us about uh, people and London throughout time? London has changed loads in, in 100 years. It's changed so much. It's um, got bigger, we've got more more buildings and more people, but actually the way in which we spend time hasn't changed much at all. So we've got posters from 1920 and people are travelling to the zoo and are travelling to, to the cinema and to theatres um, and we're still doing all of those things today. So actually we haven't changed much in what we want to do, but the city has changed a lot. What do you think makes a poster stand out or makes it special? I think it has to be really bright and bold and striking and sometimes the image has to tell you everything so the picture has to be really clear. So I think if you are travelling to the zoo, um, if you have a poster with uh, lots of lions and lots of penguins and lots of different animals, you immediately know that that, that poster is about travelling to the zoo. It's something that's very striking and bold. And can you tell us, were all posters created for the same reason? No, they were created for lots of different reasons. So some of them are about travelling on the network safely and being respectful to other passengers. Others are to help you find your way around the network. And other posters are about encouraging us to travel to the city and the countryside. So there's posters for all different reasons. And my final question is, do you have a favourite poster in the collection? It's a really hard question because there's so many posters that I love. But one of my absolute favourite posters is this poster. So this is by an artist called David Booth. And this is to encourage people to travel to the Tate Gallery. So the artist actually made all of these different tube lines out of um, toothpaste. So he squeezed all of the lines out of toothpaste. And after experimenting with that, he decided to make the tube lines out of plastic. So it's a really interesting process. And here you can see all the different tube lines which take you around London. And they all look like they've been squeezed out of a tube of paint. So I think it's a really clever and exciting poster. Now that we've had a chance to explore the depot and the poster collection, I'm going to set you a design challenge. We want you to create a poster for Transport for London. Your poster should encourage people to get outside and explore some of London's green spaces that are accessible by the transport network. Now this could be your local park, or a forest, or a lake, or even a zoo. To get you inspired, we've pulled out some posters from the collection. Let's take a closer look. I wanted to show you this poster because I think it's a fantastic example of a poster encouraging people to get out and see London's riverside. The thing that I think is really interesting about this poster is the use of the abstract colour. So the colour isn't very realistic. You can see here we've got this orange branch coming up through here, which isn't exactly what you'd see out in nature. I also think it's really interesting to have a look at the way that the artist has created the water on this poster. When you're out and about having a look around for different things that you could collect to help you make your poster, have a think about what sort of textures you can find. How do you think that these could help you create different patterns to tell us a little bit about the space you want us to explore? This poster is all about going out for walks in the winter time. You can see the artist has created that feeling of cold and winteriness uh, by the colors that they've used. And you can see this in all the brush strokes back here. But I wanted you to have a look at this big leaf here. Now, they may have used a rubbing of a leaf, which is something you could do in your poster to create this image. 
but from a distance it could also look like a big tree. So you don't have to be representative with the things that you find outside. You can make them something else when you're using them in your poster. And you can see here they've got a nice big sun for those early winter sunsets. This poster shows us a much more realistic version of being out and about in a park space. So this one is for Q, and you can see all the little daisy flowers at the front as they go into the distance like this. Now this is a way that you could use some of your found materials in your own poster. You could use grass to show us the grass and little flowers to show us some flowers. I really wanted to show you this poster because it's one of my favorites. I absolutely love the use of bright, bold colors in this image. You can see the birds here are a very bright blue. We've got lots of pinks, blues, and greens in the image as well. Now, these aren't necessarily realistic if you look at a spring scene, but it certainly feels like spring, doesn't it? When you go for a walk and you see lots and lots of different colors outside. When you're out for a walk, looking for objects and materials to include in your poster, think about how many different colors you can see. What different shades of colors do you have? You see here we've got a dark blue and a light blue. Maybe you want to mix those in to your poster. The other thing I love about this poster is the sense of playfulness in it. You can see we've got our sheep up the front here and our birds as well. So it's a mix of being abstract and realistic. Have a think about how you could mix those two styles into your poster. For today's make, we are going to be using found objects. On my walk home from the depot, I've collected lots of different things that are going to help me make my poster. The first thing I noticed on my walk were all these different colors. I also noticed lots of different shades of green that I could see in the leaves and the grass. I wanted to capture this in my poster collage, so I mixed up lots of different green paint. Try changing up the amounts of yellow and blue that you use to get lots of different shades. You could even mix in some white or black paint. Firstly, you need to decide if you're going to make your poster landscape or portrait. I'm going to go with portrait. And don't forget to leave space so that you can tell people what kind of transport they can use to get there. I wanted to cover my page in a mixture of these greens to create a camouflage effect. This leaf is going to be the basis for my image. I cut off the stem to change the shape. Now I'm going to use these red leaves. Can you guess what I'm making? Next up, I'm going to take these little daisies and add a wood chip. figured out what this is yet. Finally, I've cut up these twigs. It's a lion hiding in the grass. I was inspired by the poster we saw earlier and have used abstract colors to create this lion. Now I'm going to add my tagline, guess who's hiding at the zoo? And I'm going to tell people how they can use London transport to visit the zoo. Finally, I'm going to include the TFL Randall. There you have it. Now it's your turn. Remember, you can be inspired by different colors, textures, and found objects to represent your green space. And don't forget to share your posters with us by using the hashtag iHeartLTM. We can't wait to see what you create.